Okay guys, so good afternoon once again. So let's proceed to our last topic for for today. So regarding with the uh, with the sensory diseases. So now our fourth topic is about hearing loss. Okay, so these are the part of sensory uh, senses which affects our hearing and uh, hearing impairments or affect our listening to others. So now before we proceed for our discussions and uh, I would like you to view this 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 uh, video clips from the YouTube that uh, giving us the seven common signs of an ear infection. Actually ear infections maybe will affect or might cause uh, hearing impairments or hearing loss. So these are the signs of ear of ear infections. Let's watch this. of children suffer from an ear infection by the time they are three years old. Although they are most common in younger children, ear infections can happen to anyone. With such a high occurrence rate, it is important that you know the signs of an ear infection. Some symptoms, such as ear discharge, are obvious and easy to spot. But most are subtle and can easily be overlooked. We are here to help. Read on for seven overlooked signs of an ear infection to watch out for. What is an ear infection? An ear infection is a blockage in the ear canal that has become infected. There is a tube that runs from the middle of the ear to the back of the throat. This is called the eustachian tube. If this tube becomes blocked or swollen, then fluid can become trapped in the inner. This fluid can become infected leading to an ear infection. Nausea. Often with an ear infection, there will be inflammation and irritation of the inner ear. If it hits the parts that affect balance within the inner, this can cause nausea. This is because the body won't be able to balance right with the inflammation. Problems with balance. Inflammation and irritation of the inner ear can also cause dizziness. This, in turn, can cause issues with balance. If you have an ear infection, you might find yourself losing your balance more or suffering from spells of dizziness and vertigo. In severe cases, it can lead to falling over and possible injury. Fever. If you have an infection, your body will often raise its temperature to try and fight it off. This is because many bacteria can only survive in a limited temperature range. A fever without any flu-like symptoms may point to an ear infection. Fullness in the inner. You might not be able to see blocked eustachian tubes, but you can feel them. Swelling of the tubes puts pressure on the ear canal, leading to a feeling of fullness that you cannot pop away. Muffled hearing. An ear infection can leave you feeling like you have cotton in your ears. The fluid in the ear canal can block the transmission of sound to the inner ear. If you can't hear properly but don't have anything stuck in your ears, an ear infection might be to blame. Tinnitus. Tinnitus is the sensation of hearing noise in your ears, even in silence. The noises can be continuous or intermittent. They can vary in loudness. If you suddenly develop tinnitus, it may be a sign of an ear infection. Difficulty sleeping. The signs of an ear infection can be more noticeable at night. With nothing to distract you, even mild symptoms can keep you awake. This is a 
particular problem as lack of sleep harms your body's immune system. The overlooked signs of an ear infection. As you can see, there are far more signs of an ear infection than just drainage from the ear. An ear infection can cause a range of symptoms, not just in your ears. If you think you or a loved one may be suffering from an ear infection, contact us. We can examine your ears and measure any fluid buildup. We can then give you the right treatment to provide fast relief. Okay, so that's end with our topic for, uh, that is end with the video. So let's now proceed to the discussions. So what is really a causes or the risk factors of hearing loss? Okay, so now this is our the hearing loss. Okay, so risk factors of hearing loss is advancing age. So age-related hearing loss is called pre causes. Certain medications, some called autotoxic drugs, trauma or injury to the health, genetic factors, prolonged exposure to the exclusive loud noise, a single episode of acoustic trauma, certain illnesses such as mumps, Meniere's disease or autosclerosis or autoimmune disease. Lastly, is a tumor on the acoustic nerve or acoustic neuro. Okay? So what are the signs and symptoms? The signs of symptoms of, of hearing loss is speaking too loudly, leaning toward to hear, turning and cupping the better ear toward the speaker, answering question or responding it inappropriately, asking for words to be repeated, having a trouble hearing over the phone, asking others to speak louder or to speak more slowly and clear, finding it hard to follow conversation when two or more people are talking, and lastly is turning up the TV, radio, or music volume so loud that others might complain. So let's proceed with the treatment. How was this hearing loss? Okay, hearing loss or will be treated. So first is hearing aids. Second is removing the wax blockage. Third is the surgical procedure. And third and fourth is the cochlear complaints. So that's end with our topic for, for today about the century diseases. So hope everyone will understand or may have uh, get an idea on how to what are the risks and the factors, the symptoms and the signs of of all diseases. Thank you so much and have a nice day.